I'm here. Awesome. All right. So let me do a quick introduction and then we'll go ahead and start. Okay. Sure thing. Sure thing. All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Welcome for everyone who's joining us today. My name is Habiba from the Trekking Pals. And um, today I'm joined by Fahad Fuad, an influencer from Tanzania and uh, a wildlife photographer. And the last few weeks I've been doing live streams on my Instagram after my one month long trip in Tanzania. And I've been bringing people to share their experience about traveling in East Africa in general and traveling in Tanzania in particular. And so today, uh, Fahad is going to be sharing his experience as a local in Tanzania, and he's going to be sharing with us some tips about traveling to Tanzania. Uh, Fahad, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Uh, what are some of the things that you do? Take it from there. Thank you. Um, basically, my name is Fahad, uh, Fahad Ford and I'm a Tanzanian travel influencer, but also travel photographer and wildlife photographer, but also among the directors in a platform called Anzip Tanzania, which focuses more in promoting domestic tourism in Tanzania. As we all know, after COVID and even before COVID, people never actually kind of valued traveling within, you know, their countries. And what Anzip did was try to create the beauty of actually exploring how beautiful our country is in Tanzania and we've done it for four years and we're continuing to give experiences for Tanzanians within Tanzania but also now we have grown to a, uh, to a point that we are also hosting foreigners uh, to actually come and explore how beautiful and gorgeous Tanzania is and apart from that I'm really excited to be part of this um, live with you Habiba and I hope that we are going to get to know a little bit about Tanzania but also get to connect and get to see how you know maybe if people have questions and um uh if people have questions about Tanzania they should drop them over and we'll definitely answer and get back to everyone who will be inquiring awesome uh you know Fahad this is very exciting for me because I think Tanzania is now one of my favorite countries in Africa and just being able to talk nice. about it with brings a lot of beautiful memories so so that's exciting. memories yeah, yeah, yeah. um brilliant so, brilliant Fahad, how did your love of you know just being outside and traveling and doing what you're doing where did it start okay so basically i have a background in the media industry whereby I started off as a photographer for corporate events and just just like any other photographer but then it turned out that I realized that most of what the Western media was showing about my country wasn't really, not really my country, but generally in Africa was not what Africa really presented itself out there. And um, also I, I figured that as a photographer, I had a big role to play rather than just, you know, creating memories for people, but also create awareness about how beautiful my country is. And I got a privilege and a chance to actually got to explore a little bit a small part of Tanzania and I realized okay this is where my heart is and this is where I'll start my journey and my journey started by just trying to travel and capture a beautiful sunrise and a beautiful sunset and a beautiful forest and a beautiful lake and it turned out to be a career and here we are now four years starting five years you know exploring how beautiful and truly unforgettable as you're saying you have so many beautiful memories about Tanzania and it's because of how unforgettable experiences that you get once you're in Tanzania and who am I you know just like you you know you you you, you traveled in Tanzania you fell in love with it so now you can imagine me living in it living in Tanzania how beautiful it is and being privileged to actually be, be a content creator that means I have a huge responsibility to actually showcase to the world of how beautiful my country is so basically that's how we started and we continue showing you guys and i'm glad that we definitely connected out of the content that we get to share on the instagram is probably that what caught your attention to actually follow me and probably even get to know a little bit more about tanzania maybe beyond what you knew when you came to visit in tanzania and i'm glad we we, we got into this call today absolutely i i, I think this is fun and uh, I've been watching some of your wildlife photography. It's it's pretty impressive because I think there are a lot of things that you can do in Tanzania as a first time visitor, but nothing beats experiencing and seeing the wildlife up close in in some of the natural. True, parts. true. So it's very rich. It's very rich in wildlife here. Yeah. So let's so let's say um, if I had someone who's coming to Tanzania for the first time, maybe also 
it's their first time in Africa or East Africa, what are some of the places that you highly recommend to, to visit? <clears throat> Okay, so Tanzania can be actually very vast and very broad. It's a very huge country, and it being a huge country obviously offers a lot of things to see. You know, most of the people would think maybe if you talk about Tanzania, you only talk about Kilimanjaro Mountain, which I believe you have trekked it. Um, Serengeti being the largest national park, one among the, the large national parks in Tanzania, but also the world. But also the Zanzibar, the blue and white sands beach of Zanzibar. But really, Tanzania is not only about those three things. And that's the reason we started a platform calling it Unzip Tanzania, meaning that opening up to Tanzania and showcasing more beautiful places and hidden gems of Tanzania so that people can actually get to see beyond the Kilimanjaro, Zanzibar, and Serengeti. So if ever a person asks me what they really... Um, should come to, to see in Tanzania, I will definitely first want to question about their, their interest, you know, in travel, because if, it's, if you're an adventurous person, then we have adventurous things. If you're a beach kind of person, then we have the beaches. If you love to trek and hiking, then that means Kilimanjaro, Old Donyo Lengai, Mount Meru, these places and these mountains. And if it's a person who loves safari, we have over, I think, over 18 different beautiful national parks with different scenic environments that offers different, you know, experiences. So I will definitely first want to know on what is the first thing. But I, obviously, I have some of my favorite uh, places that I would, I would wake up in any day. I would pack my bags and go there. But definitely because it's not about me. It's about the person that wants to come and experience. So I'll definitely want to know what they want to experience, but also take them through um, a little bit more about the other destinations and things that they can experience in Tanzania rather than just the normal ones that are known uh, from the international medias, you know? And what are some of your favorite places in Tanzania that you would go to, maybe some of the <laughs> mm, Okay, so I'll start with the big ones, uh, the, the commonly known ones, and then I'll try and express the diverse of why I love them. Uh, and the first one, obviously, is Serengeti National Park. Uh, which Serengeti means the endless plains. Um, this place from the sunrise, when it rises out of the horizon, and you overlook at how beautiful the sunrise is, and you get to see the hot air balloons flying above the sky, to when the sun sets and you start seeing the big hippos coming out of the hippo pools and going out to, to graze throughout the whole night, it's just mind-blowing. It's like you're watching a Marvel movie throughout the whole day, <laughs> you know? And being a content creator and, um, and, and an artist, we have this look out of things. And we get probably to, to just speak, uh, to just to see more beauty than a normal person. So I truly love, if, if anybody ever asks me where I would rather be at any given time, definitely Serengeti is going to be one among the places. And the reason Serengeti is because uh, it being a national park has a lot of diverse from the things, uh, from, from the biodiversity that is found within the national park. That means we have the big five within the national park. Obviously, you know, it will take you more than a couple of days to actually see the, the big five. But it's one among the places whereby in Africa and probably the world, with the, um, uh, for instance, in, in among Africa and probably the world, we have the highest number of lions you know so if you're looking forward to get to see the old big five because obviously right now i think this year they announced the new big five so if you're into seeing the big five meaning the rhino the elephants the buffalo um the leopard and what else what else did i leave and there's one more remaining the rhino rhino elephant leopard um buffaloes what else? Uh, leopard. <laughs> I forgot to. So, yes. Okay. So, there's a leopard, there's a lion, there's lion. a rhino, and there's a buffalo. Buffalo? And, and the, what else, guys? The elephant. What? The elephant. Elephant's done. The elephant's done. I see people are only commenting, no, giraffe is not on the big five. Giraffe is actually um, uh, a national uh, animal symbol. Uh, in Tanzania. Oh, it's just skipping my mind too. No, not the hippo. I want, I want, I want people to actually guess right now. 
So, um, so, the head, so yes, was, obviously, yeah. Sorry, I was saying when I was in uh, when I was in Tanzania, we spent eight days on the safari, and I was really trying to see all of the big fives, but we didn't get to see the rhino. It was really mm. across any rhino. Which places did you visit? Uh, we covered the the North Serengeti, Central Ngorongoro, and what else? Uh, Tarangire. Tarangire. Mm beautiful places that you visited and then this is the other thing about you know planning your safari at least you have to know in the back of your head what you want to expect to see so if you want to see the big five then there are parts you don't obviously see them easily once you're in Serengeti but the places that you could also see the rest of other big five for instance for the rhinos which you missed out after staying for eight days safari you could have gone to a national park that is called Mkomazi National Park then you could easily see the rhinos you know every single day you would see a rhino in there in that national park so i feel like more information has to be out there so that people can actually get access to it and get to see uh, and hear about these um these uh these animals and obviously people have already answered we were correct it was a lion leopard a zebra rhino and a buffalo there's no giraffe guys yeah so if another place that i really love is um I love the mountains and obviously when you speak of the mountains there are two things there's either for the adrenaline junkie people whereby they're very fit and they can conquer big mountains like mount kilimanjaro but obviously there are other parts you know the hidden beautiful parts of the mountains that obviously are not given the media attention but also they are not really well known you know it's actually for the people that usually go off track you know to actually look for these places and then that's when you come to discover the hidden gems you know that i found in tanzania and one of the places that i really found my soul because for me traveling is connecting to myself and every time i travel i get to, to have this peace of mind that you know it's out of this world you know it's like you're in a movie you know in a big screen and it's just you and the reality over there so one of the places that i really truly love is called Ngeta. it's it's a hidden place within the morogoro region and i would say any day any time this place is out of this world out of its beauty but another thing uh, if it's a person who loves the beaches then obviously the beach destination i wouldn't recommend zanzibar i would recommend mafia island mafia. and i have a couple mafia island yes and i have a couple of reasons to why i would recommend mafia and not zanzibar so reason number one for for those people who really love the beach and they love the beach with the silence. Obviously, Tanzania has a, has a diverse of cultural backgrounds, which we have over 124 different cultural backgrounds. And being in the coastal region itself, we have the coastal people that their culture and their tradition is kind of the same from Zanzibar, Kilwa, Mtwara, and Mafia Island. But each destination offers a different variety of, you know, energy and adventure and beauty of how things are. Um, and mafia being one of them is is very it's a small island it's not as populated as zanzibar its beaches obviously are not so touristic as the zanzibar uh, beaches the way they are obviously if you have been to zanzibar you will know and you will notice a lot of people by the beach exploring the beach and having fun about the beach and there's nothing wrong with that but then again for some people then especially for the introverts, they are not into going to places that they have so much, you know, a uh, crowd of people. And I would highly recommend Mafia for those people who want. But obviously for the things that you, you can do in Mafia, number one is you are going to swim with the big whale sharks, which are found only in Mafia within, within the East African coast, I believe. Um, within tanzania list you cannot spot them in zanzibar but you cannot spot them in kilwa or mtwara or bagamoyo or tanga but you can only spot them in uh, mafia island and these are seasonal well shacks which come uh to to bless our country usually at the end till the beginning which uh starts their season starts from october until late january and then the well shack season is over so mafia could be my third destination and obviously Ah, I think these are my three big destinations. And obviously, I would, I would definitely say Arusha. 
Arusha, and the reason Arusha is is my hometown. This is where I grew up. I started my I didn't start my travel career in Arusha. I started it over in Dar es Salaam city, but I feel like Arusha has got more to offer. It is a city whereby it's very close to all these beautiful destinations. That means you can go to Kilimanjaro within thirty minutes. You can go to Serengeti within six hours, maybe. Um, no, no, you can go to Kilimanjaro within two hours. You can go to Serengeti within five to six hours. And you're blessed with so much within the city, meaning that from the vegetation, the mountains, the people, and the people have different cultural backgrounds from the Maasai, from the Meru people, from the Chaga people, the Nyaturu people, um, the people from Mbulu. So Arusha itself being a city gives a lot of diverse and makes me love it and makes it a travel destination for everybody who loves it. That's awesome. So I had some of these destinations I haven't even heard of, like Mafia Island and Mgeta. This Whoa. Is, yeah. Um, we have um, a bunch of comments here. We have a comment from our friend here saying, Mafia is great. Just swim with the whale shark today. Such a lifetime experience to me. Those who want to visit nice. Mafia for whale shark is until March. Is that a, is that a true fact, Fahad? Yes, it is a true fact. But and, and I say the end of January, meaning that the high season, they usually stay till probably late March, you know? Okay. Yeah. Well, hello, everyone. Thanks for everyone who's joining us today. Uh, I am joined today by Fahed Fuad, travel influencer and wildlife photographer from Tanzania. And we're talking about the beautiful country of Tanzania. He's sharing some of his travel stories and great places in Tanzania. All right, so what else ahead? Um, so let's talk about, uh, uh, maybe we can talk about uh, safaris in Tanzania. And okay. what, are, what are some of the tips that you have for someone going for a first time safari, how to go about planning? Um, uh, you kind of broke, I can't really hear you anymore. Oh, sorry. Yeah, let me know if you guys can still he hear me. Um, I was saying uh, maybe we can talk about safaris in Tanzania and how to go about planning a safari for the first time. Uh, let's say you are limited by time. You have four days, five days. What are some of the national parks that are worth visiting? Are you guys still hearing us? Okay. Oops. I think I just lost the head. All right. We'll give it a couple of minutes uh, until he joins back. And uh, you, if you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to share them here and we can tackle them in a little bit here. Oh, network problem. Hakuna Matata. All right. There he is. Hmm. Hello, hello. <laughs> Hi. I think we had some network problem. Can you hear me, Fahad? Yeah, network problems. Yes, I can definitely hear you loud and clear. Okay, perfect. Um, so let's talk a little bit about safaris and the wildlife. We talked about some of the national parks. How do you go about planning and preparing for a safari? And what are some of the tips that you have to share with, you know, with tourists coming for the first time, just to make sure that they are well prepared for an adventure like this? Okay. Um, for an international person or any person, any day, any time that they want to plan for a safari a list first of all you should you should have it in your mind that you need more than a day to actually do a safari yes you can do a safari in one day but to actually have a beautiful experience for a safari can actually even take two weeks or it can take a month but then again a list highly i would recommend highly highly if you are to do a safari at least do it for five days average five days five days you get to see a lot you get to experience a lot sometimes Yes, you will get to see everything in one day if you're lucky. Because again, it's what Mother Nature blesses you to see. So if you're only coming to see, you can have a day 
and you can see a zebra, you can see a gazelle, you can see a lion if you're lucky, you can see an elephant, you can see anything in a day. But if you're coming for true African wildlife safari, you know, it's just beyond saying, you know, you can look at it on the TV, but experiencing different moments, being in different landscapes and in different places, it's what makes that safari a unique thing. And for me, I would recommend five days. And within five days, as you're planning your safari, at least get to know what is it that you're, you really want to see. Okay? Again, uh, we're not going to speak about culture. We're not going to speak about the landscape. We're only going to speak about safari. Because as I said earlier, Tanzania has a lot of things to experience and ex to explore and, you know, different activities and different destinations within Tanzania. So if you're coming for safari, I would recommend five days. And then within those five days, what you could actually do, you could be, you'll be able to actually go to different national parks. So usually our safaris start from Arusha city, the city of Arusha, um, which is in the northern side of Tanzania. But then again, the, uh, I'm saying all this in referral to if a person is only going for safari. And safari in Tanzania is divided into multiple um, boundaries or destinations for instance we have the northern circuit whereby in northern circuit you'll find the tarangira national park you find the manyara national park you find the ngorongoro crater you find the Ndutu conservation area and you'll find the mighty serengeti within this uh, the northern circuit and then we also have the southern circuit whereby on the southern circuit you get to experience the Selous game reserve the nyerere national park mikumi national park you get to experience Ruaha National Park. And then there are other national parks like Mahale, where they're popular for chimpanzees. And we have a national park that is a flower or a floral national park, which is called Kitulo National Park. This is called, the AKA for Kitulo National Park is called the Heaven's Garden. This place is so beautiful. It's like the Serengeti of flowers. You know, you go on a landscape, it's a flat landscape with full of natural uh, flowers growing over through March and blossoming and bringing different diverse and colors into, you know, into the landscape. So saying all this now gives you an opportunity to at least know that now where do I start with being in a, in, in a country where it has so much diverse, right? Mm -hmm. Um. And coming from Tanzania, I would definitely, obviously, you have to know, are you only going to be doing safari or you're going to be doing Kilimanjaro, the mountains and safari, or you're going to be doing beach and safari? So once you know, excuse me. So once you know if you're going to be doing the safari and the beach, then obviously I would recommend you being in the southern, southern circuit whereby you will find the Ruaha National Park the Mikumi National Park, the Salugam Reserve, and the Nyerere National Park. But also at the same time, if you're going to, if you're going to, to experience the Kilimanjaro and the mountains, meaning that the mountains are more located within the northern circuit, that means after you summit the Mount Kilimanjaro, the tallest uh, freestanding mountain in the world, then it's only fair if you also do national parks that are within the Northern Circuit, that makes it, you will start with the Arusha National Park, Tarangira National Park, um, um, uh, Manyara National Park, Ngorongoro Crater, due to conservation area, and Serengeti. So within the five days, for instance, if you're now doing the mountain, which I believed you do, you did the mountain, Mount Kilimanjaro, right? Yeah, yeah, we did climb Kilimanjaro. So, yes, so obviously if you have climbed Mount Kilimanjaro, that means you're within the Northern Circuit, where you're within the premises of Kilimanjaro region, Arusha region, and the, you know, the leg zone area, whereby we get to share the ecosystem and the biodiversity of the national park within the Serengeti. And, uh, and somebody else here reminded me Mkomazi National Park for rhinos. As I mentioned earlier, there's a national park whereby you can spot rhinos very easily every single day. You can be lucky enough to get to see rhinos. It's called Mkomazi National Park. So... Now, how do you plan your itinerary or your, your days uh, for safari is now depending, again, how many days you...
think we're cutting off again. All right, guys, can you can you still hear me okay? I think I lost the head one more time. Uh, just going through the comments here. Man, I'm local and never enjoy the Mother Nature tourism talk like this one. Uh, absolutely. If the head has a lot of knowledge to share. Um, it's amazing. Um, I was just telling him that when we were in Tanzania, I wanted to see all of the big five, but we were having a hard time to find a, a rhino. But if I knew about Mkomanzi, national park i would have gone but it's sometimes you get a different perspective from locals to tanzania because as a tourist you only t think about the the main attractions that are popular all right so let's see if we can get him back we lost you for a little bit Truly sorry, my phone really gets busy sometimes. I'm sorry. No worries. Yes. Where were we? You were telling us about your experience in uh, Tanzania. And yeah, then I'll well, finish I, up. Yeah, I was filling the gap, uh, waiting for you to join. But talking about Mkomanzi, I was saying that, uh, you know, these are some of the parks that you don't pay attention to because most of people, like you said, they think about the plains of the Serengeti and that's the most popular national park. And that's where all of the attention is. So it's good to hear about these places that are not as popular. Yes. And, uh, and that's basically what me, together with my team, and probably the rest of, you know, the ministry and uh, other parts of, you know, of the Tanzania National Park Authority, they're also trying to promote um, tourism of not only the Serengeti, but also the other. But obviously... Being in the Serengeti, sometimes you can understand why people make it more of a big deal. And it's because of the ecosystem and the biodiversity that is found within the national park. And I totally understand why everyone who comes to Tanzania, they will live with an, an unforgettable memory and experience from Serengeti. Obviously, they'll have beautiful experiences in other part of the national parks. But Serengeti is what really, truly wins people's heart most of the time. Yeah, the, the Serengeti is just incredible. When I got back home, I, sometimes I have to pinch myself and say, was that even real? It doesn't even... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I was going to ask you, so obviously all of these national parks and conservation area, they are biodiverse. The government is probably putting some, some work to make sure that they are maintained. Um, what yes. are some of the things that we can do as tourists to make sure that we are responsible and we are being respectful to the land? Okay, so rule number one, trash in, trash out, right? So obviously, once you enter the national parks or being even outside your home or even when you're inside your home, it's just good to, to protect your environment and keep your environment clean because once it is clean, once it is protected, that means it's also going to protect you in return. And that goes now beyond when tourist vis visits our national parks in Tanzania and any other part of the world is to actually do not uh, trash or litter once you're within the national park. You know, but then again, there, there has been more of now travelers who would travel with Bluetooth speakers and I don't know why you would be in mother nature and still have your bust music, you know, either in your car or have earphones you know, sometimes it's very respectable to respect the environment or that you're within if you can just keep it quiet and keep it low, you know. And, and to protect the animals is, and the environment that they within, the, the, uh, the animals, is always to try and do not interfere with their well-being, do not interfere with, with the peaceful environment that they have. That means if you go there and you start driving fast, rushing from one point to another, that means you're creating chaos within Mother Nature. And once you create chaos within Mother Nature, that means you're not respecting it. And if you do not respect Mother Nature, a lot of things can come out of it. You know, so obviously do not trash. You will see a lot of tourists will eat, will drink and throw outside their uh, safari cars. And I believe most of the tourist companies obviously try and and educate on how it is important um, 
to preserve and take care of the environment. And but some people they're always just the old ones, and they will continue doing such things, you know. Sure, and uh, also the um, keeping your distance from wildlife. Usually, if you are going in a vehicle with a guide, I think that they do a pretty good job just telling you the do's and don'ts. Um, so what it's like, I mean, I know from, from my experience, we would be in a vehicle with a guide, um, we will be basically just spending the whole time inside of the vehicle. Um, yeah. can, Fahad, can you touch on other types of safaris that include walking um, in the plains, maybe with the park rangers or things like that? What are the types of safaris that are available? Okay. So obviously there's blue safari. Uh, whereby it happens mostly in the Zanzibar and the coastal side, whereby there you could be doing diving and get to see how beautiful the underwater world is. And um, obviously there's walking safari that is found within the national parks. And where uh, by within the uh, walking safaris, mostly what you get to experience is, it's just magical, you know, stepping the same spot where the king of the jungle is actually stepping. It's different from actually the feeling, and that's why I say, once you do safari, it's not about l seeing, it's about experiencing. So you can imagine, for instance, for those who are doing camping maybe, you would camp and you could definitely hear animals passing outside your tent. That's like you're in a very direct interactions with this wild wilderness once you're doing your safari. But obviously, while doing walking safari, you have your park ranger, you have your guide, and obviously you as a tourist, you'll probably be in between these guys. And while doing the safari, obviously people think that the safari vehicle, but obviously once doing a walking safari is a different uh, safari experience that a person can actually uh, embark to. For instance, there are kind of um, vegetation, insects, um, prints, um, could be poop or feces, you know, from animals, you know, that you cannot probably see and witness once you're in a big um, safari gym. But once you're doing walking safari, this is where you get back to experience. You know, for instance, you would see probably a giraffe eating from uh, an acacia tree. But once you're within the car, you can only be within the road. You cannot step outside and even feel the acacia. And as we all know, the acacia tr uh, trees have big thorns, but at the same time, the giraffe can still eat from the acacia tree. So you being able to do a walking safari, that means you can actually go closer and get to see how the acacia tree can protect itself from, you know, other animals, but also other vegetation. And probably sometimes if you're lucky enough, you could see prints from animals. Sometimes, yes, you can see an antelope, you can see a lion, but seeing a footprint and you walking through that footprint, it's just, you know, it's like being in a Jurassic Park. That's how a uh, walking safari feels like all the time. That's awesome. That's yeah. really cool. To do walking safari gives you a chance to see the unseen. Absolutely. Absolutely. True. True. Awesome. So these Have you are... ever done walking safari before? My, no, I have not. I've only done the Jeep safari. If you, if you were okay. asking me. I thought you were asking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, got you. Yeah, no, but, but walking, obviously, yeah. Go ahead. No, I was saying that a walking safari would be, would be a great way to, to explore because from the Jeep, you, you only get to see that far and you can probably rely on your zoom lens, but it's not as... as, as exactly. You know, like being close to, to the wildlife. As being on the same. For instance, and then another thing about fascinating about walking safari is also getting to to learn the survival skills. As we all know, most of the people that are traveling probably are coming from the cities. But now being in the wilderness, that brings you, um, it takes you back to a memory lane whereby probably how our ancestors used to live in harmony with the wilderness until, and, and, and how lucky we, and privileged we are until today that we can still get to, to witness how beautiful uh, the wilderness is is because that obviously these guys were also doing a walking safari every day. And I feel like the Maasai people does walking safari every day. Because, for instance, we, when you're within the Ngorongoro conservation area, that is one among UNESCO world record heritage places. And what makes it special and unique is the, the 
living in harmony between the wilderness and the human. And they get to interact. You'll find a Maasai man um, grazing his cattle. And at the same time, there's zebras and there's giraffes within cows and goats and sheep. And they live in peace. And, 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 and just being them and sometimes witnessing that makes you feel like you would wish to be a Maasai, you know? Absolutely. So talking, talking about uh, the, the Maasai, um, I know that there are a lot of tribes in Tanzania and as, as a tourist for first time visitors, you get to experience some, some of that culture. Um, I know that there are some tours where you can hang out with, with the Maasai, the Toga, Hadzabi, different tribes. So tell us a little true, bit more. True, about true, true. Um, so obviously, as I said and mentioned, Tanzania has a great diverse in culture and obviously as I mentioned the number of 124 different cultural diverse uh, groups you can imagine now all of this or most of this very few of them still hold into their cultural ethics and still practice you know their cultural backgrounds is still dress like how they're meant to dress and not dressing in t-shirts and stuff like that so one among or few among these cultural tribes are the Maasai, the Hadzabe, and there's one um, in Bulu. My friend comes from that tribe. Um, and and there are very few, you know, like, who still practice and dresses up and they still use their language. And they're kind of ignoring the globalization that is happening within the world, you know. And it's very beautiful also to get to see the diverse. Obviously, coming from an international, for instance, for international tourists coming to get to see people that they still live in the wilderness and still dressing yes the datoga thank you uh mazige for for sharing and then the sandawe there's so many other other cultural uh, back, uh groups that still practice so obviously when tourists come to to visit tanzania they get to witness this and apart from just the the tribes that are still wearing and dressing the same like how they used to wear uh, 20, 50 years ago, but obviously without forgetting the Swahili coastal people. Most of the people, when they go to Zanzibar, they find like the Swahili people or the people in Zanzibar, they could be, you know, intercultural people living in Zanzibar, but it's very unique from, and very diverse. Coming from maybe Dar es Salaam or coming from Arusha after your safari and getting to see the lifestyle of the Maasai, and the colors these Maasai dresses to, and their homes, and the, the landscape that they live in, and flying or driving or going all the way to the coastal side of Zanzibar, and getting to see people living in an old building. It's like you're living in the centuries, whereby buildings are very old, you know, people are still wearing white and, you know, um, African prints, meaning the Kanga and the Muslims, you know, it's, it's like you're living in a different country, but still you're in Tanzania and you get to experience a di huge diverse, you know, from the Maasai or the Hadzabe and all the way to the Swahili culture, you know? So I feel like if any person ever tries or ever plans to come and visit Tanzania, then one among the best... I lost... ...to witness the cultural backgrounds and the cultural differences that are found in Tanzania. Awesome. I mean, I know that Zanzibar is a great place to go because, like you said, it's not just the beaches, although that's what the majority of people go to Zanzibar for, but it's very rich. You get to, to learn about the, the Arab influence in the area and then the, the, the people who live in Nice. The yes. Awesome. Yes. And we have uh, inherited a lot of... Um, of, back, of traditional backgrounds from the Indians, the, the Arab, and the Islam, you know, way of life in Zanzibar. But then again, as I said, if you travel all the way to Arusha or to the, to the wildest part of uh, Ngorongoro Conservation Area and get to see the, the way the Maasai live and their lifestyle, it's outstanding and mind-blowing to get to see the difference, you know, in lifestyle. Even not only in the lifestyle, but also even the architecture you know, from how the Maasai people built their houses and homes and how, you know, the, the Swahili Zanzibari people build up their homes. Awesome.
Very cool. This is this is really fun and exciting. So I, I, we, I know you've been going for 46 minutes, but do you have anything else uh, Fahad, that you'd like to, to share with our folks here? Maybe if anyone has a question, um, they could ask us and uh, I would definitely um, get to, to answer them. But all in all is that I feel like 2022, if you are planning your bucket list, obviously while ignoring uh, COVID, you know, if you're we're planning our COVID, um, our bucket list, then I feel like Tanzania should be on top of your list. And and the reason is that once you you come to Tanzania, you get to experience a huge diverse of experiences, meaning from waterfalls, lakes, culture, safari, beach, you know, and you know some of very beautiful. Um, animals and uh, biodiversity that they very rarely get to be seen and you can actually get to see them within Tanzania. For instance, the chimps that are found in Mahale National Park and the Gombe National Park, this is a national park filled up with chimpanzees. Where else can you find chimpanzees? Yes, you can find them in other countries, but where else has all the diverse and still has the chimpanzees and still has the whale sharks and beautiful uh, crystal clear um, sand beaches in Zanzibar and Mafia. You know, and yes, we have zip line also in uh, in Mto Ambu. They have a zip line um, uh, adventurous place where you could go and experience on a day. Um, also, it's really nice um, right now during the pandemic. I know a lot of countries have a lot of restrictions, but Tanzania has been pretty open for a very long time. Uh, there, there are some yes. in place. You need you will have to do your your tests and make sure that you are protected, but. They've been pretty open to, to tourists, which is really nice for people who are comfortable to travel now. Yes, and obviously, uh, whatever the world is going through and everyone else is going through, travel is part of the medication. I'm using the medication because, again, everything if everything is in chaos, once you travel, that's where you find peace. And obviously, traveling to Tanzania, that's where peace is. Absolutely. Tanzania is a great country. I highly, highly recommend it. Uh, I have a question here. Do you plan to bring with you more tourists to Tanzania and experience the nature while Fahed has given you only 1% of it? Absolutely. The goal of these live streams is to encourage people to travel to Tanzania. Um, some people, um, you know, they have never traveled to Africa before. So we want to encourage people to go and explore Africa and explore Tanzania in particular. That's the goal here. Already. Sure. Uh, Rubondo National Park has chimpanzee, and that's also in Tanzania. Rubondo. Yes. Oh. As I said, Tanzania has a huge diverse just in national parks itself, and the things that are found within the ecosystem. Awesome. So um, I absolutely recommend that you guys, if you are not already following uh, Fahad Fuad, you should because he's showing parts of Tanzania that I personally have never seen before. And if you plan on traveling to Tanzania, that's the right place to be. You will find a lot of good recommendations from, from his page, of course. And you have another page for wildlife, Thank you. right? Yes, uh, it's called Wild by Fahad Fuad. And the reason I've decided to is because I feel like the beauty of the wilderness is so beautiful to actually mix it with other travel content. That's why I had to open another page that is strictly just for wildlife, just to praise how beautiful and magical the wilderness is. Awesome. All right, so we have a few questions rolling in. Where can you stay when you visit Mafia? I mean, a place with a friendly budget. Uh, so Mafia has um, a huge um, variety of places from camping to high resorts, you know, and um, I would recommend Butiama Mafia Lodge, obviously because they hosted me and because I've also get to experience their their service and they're also budget friendly. And then they also have different parts and then of lodges and hotels within the Mafia and Mafia being it's just like Zanzibar, it's divided like how Nungui Paje is the same way in mafia also it has its div divisions and parts whereby if you have a hotel in such an area then it's 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 beautiful but also there's um 
there's a lodge that is found within one among the islands that are found in mafia but obviously just please uh send me a dm and i will try and uh recommend and obviously once one day very soon probably i will share recommendations for mafia because obviously as we all have seen that most people do not really know of how beautiful mafia is and where to start when they want to travel to mafia awesome uh the next question is halal food accessible yes um obviously tanzania uh, has a huge population of muslims uh, obviously all other in respect to all other religions and um most of the places they they sell and provide halal food so whenever you coming and are planning to travel in tanzania each and every store has a halal food for for you Awesome. This is pretty diverse when it comes to uh, religion in Tanzania, right? I think is it 50% Christianity, 50% Muslims? What is that is that a fair number? Um yes, but still in respect to also other uh, re uh religions like the Hindus and the and and other other religion uh, religious backgrounds. Yeah, so it's 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 really diverse. And the, I think like yes, you said Yes, it's really diverse. It's it's interesting when you move from from the mainland to to Zanzibar and then you to Zanzibar the, the all the diverse yes yes for so for, if you're going to Zanzibar then there you're going to go and interact with more of the Islamic uh, Muslim community that obviously if you're an international traveler then you obviously have to kind of align and abide to the cultural um system of of Zanzibar whereby they if you dress in a respectful manner that means once you respect someone's culture then you make the host very easy to host you you know awesome all right so there's one more question uh, i'm planning a safari and zanzibar trip really looking forward to it which one do you recommend to visit can you also recommend places to visit within mafia island all right so let's uh oh no no sorry guys oops okay i think we just lost fahad if you want to try to join again and i accepted the wrong person <laughs> all right so we'll try to get these uh, questions answered then if you have any other questions uh, feel free to share them here as well already there we go and i apologize guys for the network issues Sorry once again. I'm back. No worries. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, um we were trying to answer this question. There's a person who's planning a safari and a trip to Zanzibar and they want to know what's the best month of the year to to visit. Oh, that's a very very beautiful question. Um so in in Tanzania specific and specifically for safari, any time of the year is beautiful to actually explore the wilderness. and the reason why is because for instance the term that we use in serengeti serengeti shall never die that means the wilderness is still going to be there but now for instance if we look at the northern circuit whereby we have the big great migration of the wild beasts and the zebras to cross from serengeti national park to the masai mara in kenya if you try and follow throughout the whole journey that means each and every month it's very beautiful to actually come and witness for instance right now uh, from now till march we might start getting rain season in tanzania and obviously some people will tell you the best time to do safari is during a dry season but in reality even in the rainy season there's more blessings coming with it what blessings so in the wilderness during the rainy season which is within the january till march 
This is the season we call the dropping season. The dropping season is a term that safari guides use, whereby they mean is the time where the wildebeest and the zebras give birth. So after the whole migration they do from July, August, September, and all the way back to October, to the central Serengeti, when they do the migration, they, the wildebeest come back pregnant for some reason. So they, <laughs> they start giving birth during the, 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 the January, February, and March. And they give birth in a, spe in a special place called Ndutu Conservation Area. So if you are planning to do safari, it's very good to know which time are you are going, but also what is the action that is happening during that time. Now, um, in due to conservation area, it's very popular for the wildebeest and the, and the, the wildebeest um, and the zebras because um, the, the Nduto conservation area is very, the soil is very fertile with, um, with what do they call, with very nutritious grass. So the, the wildebeest and the zebras will travel all the way uh, from the central Serengeti to the Nduto conservation area in search of these um, nutritious, you know, grasses, because again, they will be breastfeeding, but also, as we know, the wildebeest and the zebras, as soon as they give birth, the babies have to stand up and start walking in the next maybe three minutes. So, so that means the mothers have to feed in with a lot of greens that have the best nutrients. And where are the best nutrients found? They're found in due to conservation area. When do the wildebeest migrate to the due to conservation area? They, con uh, they migrate during the, the rainy season in Tanzania, which is from January to March. So if you are lucky enough to travel within this period of time, even for those people who have traveled within Serengeti within the past few weeks, they will say that the migration is moving towards Ngorongoro. The migration of the animals is leaving Serengeti, going towards Ngorongoro. And now the fascinating part about this is that when the migration moves, the wildebeest and the zebras move, that means even the big cats also move, the lions also move to find food, you know. Uh, the hyenas also move, the scavengers also move. And yes, obviously Serengeti will not be empty, but the big wilderness experience and the game watching will be now available in the due to conservation area. And this is the beginning of the year from January to March. And then obviously from that period of time, obviously now the migration will start going back to the central with the, with the small baby zebras and small wildebeest. And again, they will settle in the central Serengeti. And when it reaches July, they start now crossing again. You know, and, and it's just fascinating knowing where to see them. So there will, there's a time where they will be in Ser central Serengeti. There's a part where they'll be in Koga Tende, which is uh, where the migration usually happen. Koga Tende is the part of Serengeti, which mm -hmm. is, uh, there's a separation between the, the Serengeti and the Maasai Mara, where it's divided with, by the Maasai Mara River. So this, the Tanzanian side is called Koga Tende and Serengeti. Oh, no. It happens within the Koga Tende. Okay? So, for anyone that is in Tanzania, Tanzania can host you any time of the year, but you just have to know on, on what you want to experience and when is that thing that you want to experience available within the year. That's awesome. That was a great question, and that was an even greater answer. And really, Thank anytime you. you go... To, to Tanzania or for a safari, any time of the year, you are going to have a unique experience, which is amazing. True. And obviously awesome. within, forgetting about just, just uh, not leaving, not just talking about the national park, but also the Flower National Park. Remember I told you about a beautiful place called um, Kitulo National Park, where it's the Heaven's Garden. That's where now also the flowers be now start to blossom and all the beauty from that national park starts showing off during the rainy season. I can't believe that one hour went by so fast. <laughs> I know. There's a lot to, uh, to talk about and to experience in Tanzania. And you cannot finish, you know. It was very Wish great to, to, to be part of this. Yeah, I really, I really found it to be helpful. You share a lot of places I've been taking down notes because... Some places I've never heard about, so that's great. Um, yes. So, real quick, 
I, I don't want to take much of your time, but uh, uh, Fahad, give us a quick crash course on some words that you should know when you travel to Tanzania in Swahili. <laughs> so the first word you should know is say jumbo. Jumbo is like saying hi or saying habari. Jumbo or habari. It's like these are the easiest words you can, you can greet a person and you can say hello to a person. But also you should be nice to people. And when people say karibu, when they welcome you to Tanzania, you should know how to say thank you. And the way you say thank you, you say asante. So jumbo, asante, which means uh, jumbo means hello. Karibu means uh, welcome. And asante means thank you. And I would like to say asante Habiba for hosting me. And it has, beautiful, uh, it has been a beautiful experience and uh, talking about how my country is beautiful. And I would like to welcome every person who is watching and who has not traveled with me or with Anzep Tanzania or with the Trekking Pals, then we'll definitely want to say Karibu Sana. And obviously my sister Pauline has uh, also reminded me of one last word, which means Kwaheri, which means goodbye. Well, I, I'm going to close this out and I'm going to tell you also Asante Sana Fahad for, for your time and Asante Sana. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone who joined us today. We love Tanzania. I can't wait to go back one more time. And if you haven't made it to Tanzania, I highly encourage that you go and explore this beautiful country. Asante Sana, Aviva, and until next time. Bye. Bye-bye.